start about the nutrition in human beings that how you and me obtain food so obviously we know that we are heterotrophs that is we cannot make our own food because we don't have such photosynthetic pigment which can trap solar energy and convert into chemical energy of food so the question is how we obtain food or you can say what mode do we possess yes you are right we show a holozoic mode of nutrition that is we follow five steps in sequence one is ingestion second is digestion third we have the absorption then we have assimilation and last we have the ejection right so i think it's clear that man possess heterotrophic mode and shows holozoic kind of nutrition that is feeding on a complex food and then following the five steps in sequence now let's talk about the digestive system of man the digestive system of man is divided into two parts the two main parts the first part is the alimentary canal and the second part are the associated glands that is the group of cells that perform the function of secreting an enzyme and those enzymes are helping in the digestion that is breaking of complex substance into simple this we have already discussed and we are going to discuss it in detail now so let's start with alimentary canal see as you can see that alimentary canal is a long tube do you know what is the length of this tube it is 9 meter long tube it is 9 meter long tube and we'll we are going to discuss about the parts of the alimentary canal and we'll take up in sequence first we have the mouth right mouth is also termed as the buccal cavity mouth is also termed as a buccal cavity and you all know that what do we possess inside the mouth we have the tongue we have the teeth we have the uh, salivary uh, secretion also so we are not taking the glands at this moment we are just focusing on the alimentary canal so i'll just mention the parts so the first part we have is the mouth also called as buccal cavity uh, you can say encloses the teeth and the tongue then the mouth leads into a tubular structure as you can see that a tube like structure is running from the mouth and ending up into a j shaped structure this tube is called as esophagus also termed as a food pipe so this is a tubular structure which connects the mouth with this j shaped structure and what is this j shaped structure it is stomach it is stomach so esophagus is connecting the buccal cavity and the stomach and how the stomach looks like as you can see that it appears to be a j shaped it appears to be a j shaped not exactly j shaped but yes it resembles the j shape that is the reason i said that j shaped organ that is the stomach and then stomach leads into a tubular structure and you can see that a tubule is uh, quite long and it is coiled also and that is called as small intestine what is it called as it is called as small intestine though its name is small but it is not at all small out of 9 meter it is approximately around 4 to 5 meter in length so out of whole 9 meter tube 4 to 5 meter is the small intestine right so it is not small it is quite uh, you can say big in length but the name is small and if we talk about the parts of small intestine a big tube is uh, you can say differentiated into three parts like the first part is called as duodenum the middle one is called as jejunum and the last part is called as ileum so i think you got it that small intestine possesses three parts the first part is the duodenum middle is the jejunum and the ending part is called as ileum right then the small intestine leads into a tube as you can see that the tube is quite short and wide and this tube is called as large intestine what is it called as it is called as large intestine though the name is large but it is not that much large as the small intestine it is comparatively shorter in length and as far as the parts are concerned it is also roughly divided into three parts the first part is the cecum the middle part is called as colon and the ending part is called as rectum 
So the three parts of large intestine, I think it's clear, cecum, colon and rectum. And finally, the last opening, that is the anus. And in anus, there are anal sphincters present, which actually controls the movement of anus. Right. And one more thing I would like to tell you that in like when you are uh, when you're looking at large intestine, you can see there is a small reduced portion which is attached to the large intestine. That is the vestigial organ that is the vermiform appendix. It is not at all functional now, but yes, it was functional in our ancestors. That is the reason I called it as vestigial organ. So I think the elementary canal is clear. Let's uh, take a quick recap. Elementary canal, 9 meter long tube, right? The second thing is the organs are summed in a sequence, mouth, then we have esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and then we have anus. Now three parts of small intestine, that is duodenum, jejunum, ileum, three parts of large intestine, cecum, colon, rectum. So this is all about the elementary canal. And one more thing you should know, because you often come across a question like this, that which part of elementary canal is the biggest of all? So obviously it is going to be small intestine and its length is approximately 4 to 5 meters out of the complete 9 meter elementary canal tube. So first part of digestive system is clear, that is the elementary canal. Now let's start with the associated glands. So the first thing I would like to ask you, do you actually know that what is a gland? Gland refers to the group of cells which have a special property that is they secrete something, right? In digestive system, the secretion is of enzymes. What is secreted from those glands? The secretion is called as enzymes. And enzymes are basically biocatalysts. They catalyze the reactions or you can say they increase the rate of reaction. And similarly, here also they are going to act as biocatalysts. They are going to break down a complex food into simple ones. So enzymes actually play a very, very important role. Now let's take up the glands in order of their occurrence, that where they are present, what they are secreting, and what kind of function the enzyme is doing. So the first gland is the slivery gland. As you can see in the figure, that slivery gland is present in mouth. There are basically three types of slivery glands. One is the parotid, other is the submaxillary, and third is the sublingual. All the slivery glands, they produce slivery amylase. So basically the enzyme that they secrete is called as slivery amylase. Also, we can call it as tylin. And what is the function of slivery amylase? It acts on a nutrient that is a carbohydrate, like if you are consuming a potato or something which is rich in carbohydrate, it is going to digest the carbohydrate and it is going to convert the starch into maltose. Right, maltose is not the simplest form of the carbohydrate, but still it is initiating the digestion of carbohydrate. It starts breaking it into a simpler substance. Right, so the first gland, I think it's clear, is the slivery gland. The second gland is present in the stomach. Like as you eat food, so in mouth the slivery gland is present, then the food moves and then it comes to stomach and in stomach there are gastric glands present. Right, in like if you will see the inner section of stomach wall, the stomach wall is not smooth. It has certain ridges in it, ridges and grooves in it. So inside those ridges and grooves, there are the gastric glands which are present. So if somebody asks you that where the gastric glands are present, you are going to answer in a way that gastric glands are present in the inner wall of the stomach, right? Now, what does they do? They secrete gastric juices, right? They secrete gastric juices and the main component of gastric juice is the pepsin and the renin, right? What is the function of pepsin now? See, pepsin acts on proteins. 
it helps in converting the complex protein into the simpler substance not the simplest but the simpler substance so it helps in converting the proteins into peptides now the problem is pepsin cannot function until the acidic medium is present right so in gastric juice there is an hcl secretion also because hcl is going to provide the acidic medium which is required by pepsin and under acidic condition pepsin can act on protein and convert into a simpler substance that is peptides but we all know that acids are quite corrosive right so if it is secreted in the stomach obviously it is going to affect the inner lining of the stomach so prior to it what happens there is a secretion of a slimy substance that is called as mucus right so mucus actually surrounds the inner wall then hcl is secreted hcl provides the acidic medium and in that acidic medium pepsin starts converting proteins to peptides so this is how these three uh, you can say components that is the mucus hcl and pepsin are linked together they cannot function alone they all the three of them function together so the other enzyme or you can say the other component of gastric juice is the renin and what does the renin do it coagulates milk so i think it's clear that we have gastric juices and the gastric juices are the mixture of juices and what are those we have mucus which forms the inner lining hcl which kills the microorganisms and also it provides the acidic medium for the function of pepsin for the functioning of pepsin pepsin converts peptides to converts proteins to peptides we have renin that coagulates milk so this is all about the gastric gland now the third gland which is associated with the alimentary canal that is the largest gland of a body and you all know that which gland is called as largest gland it is liver right so liver actually secretes the bile juice and it also produces some bicarbonate ions bile juice actually do not participate in the digestion it just emulsify the fats what do you mean by emulsification it means breaking bigger droplet of fat into a smaller droplet so it helps in emulsifying the fats and the second thing which is coming from liver is the bicarbonate ions and the function of those bicarbonate ions is that they are going to provide the basic medium they are going to provide the basic medium so the secretion of liver is not directly going from liver to small intestine there is a part inside the liver where the secretion of liver is temporarily stored and that is the gall bladder that is the gall bladder so the liver secretion that is the bile juice and the bicarbonate ions they are stored in the gall bladder and then through a bile duct it reaches to the small intestine so this is all about the third gland that is the liver the next gland which food come across is the pancreatic gland do you know that pancreatic gland has a special feature that it is exocrine as well as it is endocrine in function that is it has the tendency to secrete the enzymes also and it can secrete the hormones also but now at this moment we are discussing about the digestive system so obviously we are going to consider its the exocrine part that is its enzymes we are going to consider its exocrine function so pancreas secrete pancreatic juices which is actually a mixture of three juice one is pancreatic amylase other is pancreatic lipase and third is the trypsin pancreatic trypsin so the function of pancreatic amylase amylase we have already done that slivery amylase here all it is here it is pancreatic amylase but the function is same they are going to convert the starch that is the leftover starch which is not converted by the slivery amylase or if there is some starch left for the conversion it will convert that starch into maltose and the trypsin is going to act on the peptides and it is going to convert peptides further into the simpler substance that is the peptides and lipase is going to act on the emulsified fats 
that is the small droplets of fats and it is going to convert the fat into fatty acid and glycerol. I think you got it. The last gland is the interstinal gland which is present in the wall of ileum that is the last part of small intestine. In ileum the juice that they secrete or you can say the enzyme that they secrete is the intestinal juice or it is termed as circus entericus. It is actually a mixture of juices. It, it has got the erypsin also, it has got the maltase also, it has the lipase also and these enzymes are going to end up the digestion. That is, they are going to convert the simplest substances into the simplest form. Right, so all the peptides will get converted into amino acids, all the maltose will get converted into glucose and all the fats is going to convert into fatty acid and glycerol. So this is how the enzymes are going to act and they are converting the complex substance into the simplest substance or you can say the form in which it can be absorbed by different body cells. So I think you got it. You know about the elementary canal now. You are aware of the associated glands also.